P versus NP is one of the most famous open problems in computer science. This is certainly in part due to its challenge, but the problem also cuts the very nature of problem solving, connecting Mario with cryptography. P versus NP typifies the easy to understand but hard to solve math problem. The problem boils down to, is there an easy way to solve jigsaw puzzles? In computer science, we like to categorize problems based on how hard they are to solve. For example, some problems we know are easy, such as adding two numbers together. It's simple to do and simple to check if someone's answer is correct. We can just solve the problem for ourselves. Let's call this group P. Examples of problems in P include, what is a number's greatest common divisor and is this number prime? Then there are problems that may or may not be hard to solve, but are easy to check if a solution is correct. We'll call these problems of unknown difficulty NP. Let's look at jigsaw puzzles as an example. If I claim to have solved a jigsaw puzzle, it would be pretty easy for you to verify if I were telling the truth. All you'd have to do is go through each puzzle piece and check that it's properly connected to its neighbors. However, what if I gave you a box of jigsaw pieces and then asked you if it's possible to use all of the pieces to create a complete puzzle? How would you go about trying to figure out if a jigsaw puzzle is even solvable? One way would be to try all possibilities and say it isn't solvable if no configuration gives us a complete picture. However, this would take an enormous amount of time. Is there any faster way? We actually don't know. And that is P versus NP. The heart of the question is whether or not easily verifying a solution and easily producing a solution describe the same problems. On the surface, it seems like problems in NP are more challenging. And we know that if a problem is in P, it must also be in NP. What we want to know is if the reverse is true. Does a problem being in NP mean it is also in P? If that is the case, it would mean that both sets describe the same problems. It seems like verifying a solution and having to solve a problem for yourself would be fundamentally different, but P versus NP asks if that really is the case. We've been thinking about P as problems that are easy and NP as problems that might be hard, but what does that mean? Easy isn't a very mathematical term, so we'll use our knowledge of big O from the previous video for a stronger definition. What we mean by an easy problem is that there is a solution that runs in polynomial time. The jigsaw puzzle then would be an example of a problem in NP since checking the solution runs in polynomial time. If there were a polytime algorithm to solve jigsaw puzzles, then the problem would also be in P but as of right now, we don't know if such an algorithm exists. It might not be immediately clear how we would go about proving whether or not P and NP are the same sets. The Cook-Levin theorem presents an incredible idea which shows that a problem called SAT is the hardest problem in NP. By hardest, we mean that we could use a solver for SAT to solve any other problem in NP. SAT encapsulates all problems inside of NP, meaning that any problem in NP can be transformed into a version of SAT. With this, if we could prove that solving SAT was easy, it would mean that all NP problems are easy, since solving SAT allows us to solve all other NP problems. And so, P equals NP. On the other hand, if SAT is fundamentally hard to solve, then P does not equal NP, since SAT would be a problem in NP, but not in P. This gives us a potential vector for solving P versus NP, since we can now just focus on whether or not SAT is easy. SAT is like the king of NP. It's able to completely represent every other problem in NP. Because of this, we'll call SAT NP complete. However, it was just the first domino to fall. Proving SAT to be the hardest problem in NP opened the floodgates in this field of study 
as it allowed us to find many more of these NP complete problems, including the jigsaw puzzles from before, Sudoku, Mario, and hundreds more. Other, more mathy problems include finding a Hamiltonian path, which is finding a path on an arbitrary map to get to every city without going on the same road more than once. It also includes subset sum, which asks if we can select a group of numbers on a random list of integers that add up to zero. Sat has to share the throne with all of these problems as the hardest problem in NP. All NP-complete problems are fundamentally the same since they can all be used to solve each other. If we can show that any one of these problems can be easily solved, or that it's impossible to efficiently solve them, we will have solved P versus NP. Beyond P and NP, there are problems that we know are hard, such as chess. We know chess is hard to solve, but it also seems hard to verify a solution. Given a random chessboard, it's not clear what would be the best move to make, but it also isn't obvious how to check if a move made was the correct one. This new class of problems is known as exp time. Unlike with P and NP, we actually know that P and exp time are not the same. In other words, exp time is fundamentally harder and contains problems not found in P. This can actually be proved using the diagonalization method we've seen a few times before. However, we don't know if P equals NP or if NP equals exp time. But we do know that the classes must break down somewhere. There are many more groups of problems under an entire field known as complexity theory, such as classes looking at the efficiency of using space, looking at the complement of problems, using probabilistic algorithms, and using quantum computers. Going even further, there are problems that are so hard that they're impossible, such as the halting problem that we've talked about before. We started with the simple question of whether we could easily solve jigsaw puzzles and quickly ballooned into the entire field of complexity theory. But why do we care about questions like P versus NP? If P did equal NP, there would be enormous consequences to today's society. It would mean that huge swaths of problems we once thought were hard would suddenly be easy. The common example is that it would invalidate most of our cryptography since they're dependent on the hope that prime factorization is hard. But we also see NP-complete problems crop up in other fields like biology, such as with protein structure prediction. They show up in surprising places, like trying to optimally fill an art gallery with guards, or matching medical students with residency programs. Perhaps most importantly, if P equaled NP, we would be able to quickly find math proofs to problems, since verifying a formal proof is easy for computers. Before we get too crazy, it's important to note that the vast majority of computer scientists believe P does not equal NP. One reason is that we continue to find more and more NP-complete problems, but are nowhere closer to finding an efficient solution to any of them. Even if P does equal NP, that doesn't mean we can easily start solving NP-complete problems in practice. Our definition of efficient, being polytime algorithms, is extremely generous and can still be very slow. On the flip side, just because we discover that a problem is NP-complete doesn't mean it's impossible. Our big O analysis of algorithms is pessimistic, but real-life problems may actually be pretty simple. For example, generalized Sudoku is challenging, but computers can solve the standard n by n grid very quickly. Beyond that, we often have very efficient approximation algorithms that are good enough, even if they aren't perfect. We know chess is hard, but we already have computers that can beat humans in chess. Analyzing problems in this way allows us to connect the theoretical with the practical, helping us know what is easy and what is hard, and how we can get around hard problems. But to me, the appeal of P vs NP cuts deeper than that. This type of analysis allows us to see the underlying nature of problems. It strips them down to their core, unveiling that two problems that seemed very different on the surface 
are really two sides of the same coin.